Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time we're going to look at a Grundy tube volt meter. See here, Röhren voltmeter RV3. And um, I think this one is from about 1960. I was able to find some information on uh, Radio Museum. I also found a schematic. And the schematic reveals there's most likely a battery inside. And I don't have the high voltage probe. The probe consists of a um, tube, uh, EA91, a dual diode tube is uh, inside the probe. So I can only use the DC input here and the ohm input is supposed to be here, right? And of course for resistance I need the internal battery. And I'm also, I'm always super scared about instruments like this with internal battery. Why the heck did they put in a battery instead of uh, an extra winding on the transformer or something like that? It's just a dumbest ever and most of the old tube voltmeters they are made like that and it's just a problem when you forget um, to change the battery oh no so we of course have a zero point adjust and a gain adjustment for uh, resistance and that's of course because different voltages uh, will yeah, affect different readings. We need to do that. It looks like it was used quite a lot. You can see there, there's almost nothing left of the scales here. It should consist of uh, three tubes, a uh, voltage regulator tube, 150 volts, and two E80F um, tubes. It's a bridge design. Um, so it's that's why it's using two uh, tubes for amplification and the difference is what we see on the meter. But I definitely think we should open it before I try and power it up. I think the idea is the probe, uh, the tip maybe goes in here for transport and then you take it out of that hole and then you use it or something like that. Maybe it's for protection of the tip. Well, I'm a little bit unsure about this uh, funny hole that just goes all the way in there. And then there's yeah, this plug right there for DC. Why is it looking like that and not like, like that? It's also a little bit weird, right? It is configured for 220 volts and it should use about 20 watts. And of course, when it's so old, it is made in West Germany. And here is the type number is not only RV3, but it's also called 6062. And also uh, dash 101 is written on the schematic. Yeah, let's try and see if we can figure out how to open this thing. So now we are inside this fantastic unit and obviously there is a battery in here, a 1.5 volt single cell from Philips. I'm very happy to see it's not a Dura leak. And uh, I want you to see something really, really cool. <laughs> I don't know exactly how old this uh, the battery is, right? There's 1.1 volt on that one. So I'm going to see if I can pull it out. And uh, maybe there's a date code written on this cell somewhere, right? But we have another date code written here on the meter. And that is a classic uh, place for date codes, 63. And uh, those two bulbs, they're not really bulbs. They look like bulbs, but they're constant current regulators. They are in series with the filaments for the two amplification tubes, the E80F tubes. This one is the 150 volt voltage regulator tube made for the anode voltages. 
And uh, the, the filament systems, it's of course, they are in series. And uh, the 300 milliamp constant current uh, bulb goes in series with the two tubes here. And of course, the voltage sensor probe I talked about uh, a little bit earlier got its own voltage or current regulator tube. Then um, we can see the really cool bulbs here. Those bulbs are for the scale and that will lit up the different scale on the meter depending on what um, button you select here. And then the right scale light up. I mean, that is so nice feature and you don't see this in many uh, meters. So it's just to make readout easier. And uh, yeah, we have two sets of resistors because it is a, a bridge system. So it's a differential amplifier. What else can I say about this? We have a lot of wires going into the transformer and that's because we have the mains voltage selector mounted here at the back. And the red wire is the chassis or ground uh, or earth. And this is also very normal for 1960s, also in households and uh, high power electricity and all that. Red was earth in old times. So that's also a little bit uh, fun to mention here. Really funny uh, thin, thin wires for the, for the meter, don't you think? Compared to any other wires. I was actually um, lucky to guess right on the constant current regulator bulbs. They are different. See, if you look really careful here on the glass, can you see it says three to nine volts? And then it says um, 0 0.3 amps, okay? That one is of course the outside one and this one goes to the one tube that is um, for the probe. And if we take the other one that's sitting right there in this socket, that is the one that goes in series with the two tubes there. See, this one is a little bit different. It says seven to 21 volts, also 0 0.3 amps. So that is important. This, this is probably written in the manual and all those kind of things. And then I think I should, I want to play with these because let's see if we can make a little demonstration and see how well this works. Okay, so I want to play with the one for the external sensor because I don't have the external sensor. And if I blow this up, it's not going to be a huge problem right now at least. So um, I want to perform a little um, experiment. Let's see how that works. I've connected this constant current regulator bulb to my ohm meter, 1.6 ohms, and that is cold, all right? So this is nine volts over this regulator, and uh, we got 625 uh, milliamps. So the fun thing is I was expecting, expecting a more constant current See here, if I decrease the voltage and then it goes quite fast into a new stable current, I should perhaps make a little um, curve so you can see what is going on here. And um, I think I've misunderstood the um, specifications. It says 300 milliamps, but I think it is meant to be in series with a tube that is designed for 300 milliamps. I think that is uh, what they try to um, specify because the, definitely the current here is uh, way over the 300. So, yeah, and of course it is only specified um, to work with three, uh, between uh, three and nine. So that is uh, probably what I learned from this experiment. So here is the curve from my measurements, uh, both listed and also as a curve that shows uh, the current versus voltage. And I think, yeah, it actually does 
more or less regulate for a constant current, but it's more or less 500, something like that. It's This is um, very close to what I expected, but I would have uh, loved to see this around 300 milliamps, but that is just not the case. Um, I don't know exactly why, to be honest. I feel I'm ready to do the first uh, power-up test. I, of course, want to use the test the DC input first. And um, I believe here we go for the DC voltage, full range. So let's just select 10 volts and let's not connect anything at all. So it's floating. And then I go to positive. I guess now it's in DC mode, positive. I mean, this is uh, just my best guess. And let's uh, turn on input, see what happens. Power consumption seems uh, nominal, 100 volts and I have 7 watts. So I can easily just continue. We have a selenium rectifier at the bottom, so I'm always afraid uh, for shorted selenium rectifiers or shorted caps or something like that. See what happens here. This is a 210. Let's go to 220. And it's using 21. No, at 220, it's using exactly 20 watts. And we have a nice bulb here that says DC. Let's turn this off. See, this one is uh, the 10 volt scale. I totally love the indicators there for the ranges that's just fantastic so this is the zero point so i should of course see be able to adjust for zero volts so far so good let's apply one and it reads a little bit low and let's see if we can give it five. That should be in the middle. Okay, so it is definitely a little bit low. Maybe it's just, yeah, that is just uh, how it is so far. So it's reading four. Okay, so it's, I try and give it 10 and then it reads, yeah. 7.8 all right so but i mean it's definitely working so far right so the most in <laughs> interesting is going to be the ohms range because we have a like a battery that is a million years old in this unit so i definitely want to play with the resistance okay what happens if i go to oh yeah another lamp works so that is a 30 volt range oh and that's a little bit too much i still have 10 uh, volts input oh oh maybe zero is not correct you see so i'm in a new range and because this is a balanced setup we have two sets of resistors and two sets of uh, tubes in a balanced configuration obviously you need to adjust your zero point for each range like that so now we have zero the 30 volt range and we can put in our 10 volts and obviously it's still pretty low that is the 100 volt range and then it goes up there 30 300 yeah and a thousand volt range okay so all the voltage ranges that will be the two out there right and okay let's try and see ohms <clears throat> then it goes to ohms obviously and then what and then you zero yeah yeah oh this is a lot of fun i've been playing around with this and trying to uh to zero and uh, open adjust this and obviously it worked the first uh, few tries and then i went a little bit up and down here and now it is, of course, not working anymore. And it is, of course, because the battery is uh, totally flat. <laughs> it was an, an indeed an open circuit voltage. And now that voltage is uh, gone. And uh, 
I cannot adjust anything and it's not reading anything correctly. But so far so good. But that is uh, more or less the behavior for this one. And then let's... Oh yeah, we have one more experiment to do. That is the AC. What is that? How do I get that lamp to light up? I mean, ohms is that? This is AC, right? So I am now in AC. So all I have to do is... Okay, here we go. That is another range. So all the bulbs really works. And then we go for there. Isn't that a little bit interesting? Ah, uh, that is of course, now I know why. It's because the response is not linear because of the diode rectifier tube, right? So when you see you have 30 and 300 uses that range, right? But when you go down in the lower, see, you need another scale because it is not a factor of 10, it is less. So this is compensate for the unlinear behavior of uh, the diode system. And then they've just corrected this on the display instead of correcting this electronically. I think I forgot to show the bottom part of the unit. All this is um, tinned iron. So it is definitely, um, it's going to rust and corrode and you can see all the corrosion. It is a little bit worse from the top. And that is the famous selenium rectifier. I'm always uh, scared about that. And then you have a voltage drop resistor to the voltage regulator tube. And that one runs really, really warm, as you can see. And the, the only thermal error they did in this design, that is this resistor here. And all that heat close to that capacitor. I mean, that is bad and no holes. They, they forgot uh, all the venting holes here or this um, resistor shouldn't have been close to the capacitors. It should have been far away. I want to show you another detail about the thermal design. And that is quite obvious. When we look from the side, you can see the tubes they are mounted at the very, very top. That means the heat goes out and up and away and it's not heating any other components. That is how you want to do it. So here is the corrosion I wanted to show. It's quite bad. And you can also see the unit did see some leaked cells before. And uh, normally you find date codes here at the bottom. And I try to scratch this uh, as clean as I can. And I see, let's try and hold this steady here. This is 01, but I see some other letters now and then and here and there, but I can't make any sense out of this because it's quite corroded. Now I need to go and wash my fingers, definitely. Some funky chemicals. And this is a dry cell containing something that's not looking dry. But I think that is what I wanted to show about this uh, unit so far. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon again. Bye bye and good night.